It's like Poland wanted to fire a warning shot across our bow. About two days before the Senate confirmed Amy Coney Barrett and ushered in a reversal of civil rights that stands poised to erase 50 years of progress, Poland sent us a stark reminder of what it looks like when you give right-wing government too much power when their constitutional tribunal effectively outlawed abortion across the board. Now, I should be clear that it's not like Poland was killing it on reproductive rights up to this point. Women's rights have been eroding there for years, and they weren't exactly starting at some golden age standard. But the already restrictive laws still allowed a woman to get an abortion if, say, the baby was going to be born with a severe genetic deformity that would make it unviable. Well, as of last week, that's illegal too. There are still narrow exceptions in cases of rape and when the life of the mother is threatened, but who the hell knows how much longer that'll last. So, you know, just a quick reminder that regardless of how the vote goes on Tuesday, we can expect a really similar trend here because elections have consequences and those consequences don't go away after better elections. And if you think I'm exaggerating about how little regard the GOP has for women's rights, perhaps I should introduce you to Madison Cawthorn. Aside from sporting the whitest, most Republican name you can form with the human mouth, Cawthorn is running for Congress in North Carolina's 11th district. And this guy is beyond despicable. To begin with, he's a white supremacist who posted pictures on Instagram of his trip to Hitler's former vacation house, where he said that visiting it had been on his bucket list for a while. He also accused a reporter who was critical of him of trying to make it impossible for white males to run for office. And let me just say, it looks like he's killing it. But Cawthorn is also a raging misogynist. At least that's what several women who went to school with him say. Multiple women have accused him of sexual assault and verbally abusive behavior, including forcibly kissing them, reaching under their dresses, grabbing their thighs, just being a general piece of despicable shit, really. Now, there's a chance Colthorn is going to lose his race even in a heavily Republican district. But even if he does, that's not exactly an exoneration of the party. The fact that he's even in the running is plenty to indict them on. And one last story I wanted to fill you in on. About a week ago, a story broke about a pastor peeing on a woman during a red-eye flight to Detroit. Now, we had very little in the way of details at first, just that it was a well-known pastor. And I don't know about you, but I've been dying of curiosity since the news broke. Well, we finally learned the specifics this week. It turns out the pisser in question was Daniel Chalmers of Love Wins Ministries. And it seems to have been a situation where he was on sleeping pills. He was barely conscious and he thought he was in the bathroom. And I'm sure he didn't intentionally whip out his dick and start peeing on a stranger. But there's something about a pastor pissing all over a random woman without realizing it that encapsulates religion at least as good as any story I've ever covered on this segment. And on that note, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli. 